Zone 2 training is one of the most effective forms of exercise to improve your metabolic health, lose body fat, and lay down the foundation for serious endurance. But Zone 2 training takes time. The sessions are long and progress can feel slow. As a busy runner over 40, juggling constant demands on your time and energy, is there a way to get all the benefits of a Zone 2 without spending hours every week grinding it out? In this video, we explore what the science says about the minimum effective dose of Zone 2 training so you can gain more by training less. More importantly, I'll show you how to structure your week for maximum return on your time. Let's start at the base of the pyramid, your metabolic health. Because what good is chasing a leaner physique or a marathon PR if your health and blood sugar levels are out of whack? Let's face it, the fundamental reason you engage in zone 2 training if you're over 40 is not to qualify for the Olympics, but to stay out of your doctor's office. So how much zone 2 do you really need to keep the doctor away? Top health organizations such as the American College of Sports Medicine and the World Health Organization have set the baseline at 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity per week. Under this guideline, you're looking at about 5 runs of 30 minutes across the week. Most people will quote this guideline from ACSM and WHO, but that's just the surface level recommendation. Here's where I differ. After digging deep into the published research, the baseline of 150 minutes per week is on the high side of the minimum effective dose. Research studies by Sherry Kohlberg in 2016 and Brett Goodpaster in 2010 found that just 90 to 120 minutes per week at zone 2 intensity, especially if done consistently, is enough to meaningfully improve insulin sensitivity, reduce cardiovascular risk, and support better energy production. Also, in a separate pilot study, 90 minutes of moderate aerobic work spread across three 30-minute sessions each week significantly lowered LDL cholesterol and fasting glucose. That's only three to four runs of 30 minutes per week. Now, this isn't just about numbers on a lab test. It's about waking up with more energy and feeling like your body is working with you instead of against you. So if you thought that Zone 2 needed hours and hours each week to be effective, wouldn't you now agree that staying healthy suddenly feels a lot more doable? But what if you're looking beyond just staying healthy and you're also trying to lose fat and actually get lean? Well, that's when things get interesting. Zone 2 is called the fat burning zone, but the amount of fat you actually burn per minute depends on whether you're doing it right. Don't get me wrong, no matter how you do it, you're still tapping into fat as a primary fuel source for your zone 2 runs. But if you understand the nuances and structure it correctly, you can maximize the effects and burn more fat with less time. So, how do you do it right? And more importantly, what's the minimum effective dose you need to see meaningful fat loss results? To really tap into your fat stores, it's not enough to just rack up 3 runs of 30 minutes per week like what you would do for improving your metabolic health. Studies show that your body starts to burn the most fat per minute around the 50 to 60 minute mark of continuous zone 2 running. That's when your metabolism really starts to shift gears. Why does this happen? Well, in the early stages of your zone 2 run, your body uses a mix of glycogen and fat for energy, but it still leans more heavily on glycogen, especially in the first 20 to 30 minutes. Glycogen is a stored form of carbohydrate in your muscles and liver and is your body's preferred fuel especially when starting exercise or increasing intensity. Now, as your session continues, catecholamines rise and insulin levels drop to some of their lowest baseline levels. With less insulin in your bloodstream, your body becomes far more efficient at mobilizing stored fat for fuel, particularly from intramuscular triglycerides and circulating free fatty acids. Mitochondrial activity also increases over time, allowing for more efficient fat oxidation. In essence, the longer you stay in zone 2, the more your body shifts towards using a higher percentage of fat relative to glycogen as fuel. That switch builds over time and peaks deep into the run. All of this is backed by a landmark study by J.A. Romnin and colleagues, which mapped out how fat and carbohydrate metabolism shifts with exercise intensity and duration. The link to the study is in the description below. So if you're squeezing four 30 minute runs a week, you might be hitting your metabolic quota and burning some fat, but you're not fully unlocking your fat burning potential at its fullest. Instead, you're better off dropping one of those sessions and extending another. Two shorter 30 minute runs paired with one long run in the 60 plus minute range gives you not only the metabolic health benefits, but also maximizes your time in that fat burning sweet spot. It's a small shift with a big payoff. And if you've been stuck in a cycle of doing everything right, but not seeing the scale move, adding that long zone to run weekly might be the tweak that your training has been missing. 
doing long zone 2 runs are the primary reason why distance runners, even those over 40, tend to stay super lean with a low percentage of body fat. Before we move on, I would love to hear from you. Will this change how you structure your runs moving forward? Drop a comment below and let me know how you're planning to apply this in your training. Circling back to those distance runners, what if you want more than just health and aesthetics? What if you're training for a faster 10k or for your first marathon? or simply to prove to yourself that age isn't slowing you down. Performance goals require a different level of commitment, not just in time, but also in structure. If you're aiming to build a base for endurance, whether it's for a faster 10k, finishing your first marathon, or just holding a pace without feeling like your lungs are on fire, you need more than metabolic maintenance. What you need is durability. And for runners over 40, durability doesn't come from random workouts. It comes from consistent, smartly planned time in zone 2 and it has its own evidence-based minimum effective dose. A study by Montero and Lundby tracked men and women aged 40 to 50 over 30 weeks. They found that logging at least 120 minutes of zone 2 each week improved VO2 max by 11%, increased stroke volume by 7%, and boosted citrate synthase activity, which is the key indicator of your mitochondria's oxidative capacity by 17%. However, once weekly zone 2 running exceeded around 180 minutes, these markers began to plateau. In other words, the additional time invested in zone 2 running beyond the 180 minute threshold primarily benefits only those chasing advanced performance goals. Such extended commitment makes sense mainly if you're dedicated to extracting every ounce of improvement from your training rather than if you're simply aiming to build and maintain a robust foundation of endurance. On the flip side of that, an 8-week minimum dose trial in recreational runners over 50 found that dropping below 60 minutes of weekly zone 2 triggered a 4% decline in VO2 max. You definitely wouldn't want that. So, unless you're chasing a sub 4-hour marathon, the sweet spot recipe for time crunch runners over 40 is a structured 150 to 180 minutes a week of zone 2 running. And by structure, we're talking about two runs of 40 to 45 minutes midweek to keep metabolic health and fat burning humming along. And one longer 90 minute weekend run to drive those deeper mitochondria and stroke volume gains. Total time is about 180 minutes or three hours per week. Up next, let's translate those numbers into an exact weekly template you can drop into your calendar. So you build endurance, burn fat and keep your health intact. Let's bring it all together. If you're starting from scratch or just looking to maintain your health, aim for 3 to 4 30 minute runs per week. That puts you in the 90 to 120 minute range, right where most metabolic improvements occur. If fat loss is your next priority, keep two of those 30 minute sessions and replace one with a longer run of 60 minutes or more. That brings your weekly total to around 120 to 150 minutes, just enough to trigger that deeper fat burning adaptation your body needs to accelerate fat loss. And if your goal is to build endurance and boost performance, step it up to two midweek runs of 40 to 45 minutes plus a longer 90 minute session on the weekend. That structure adds up to roughly 3 hours per week. It's an efficient sweet spot for runners over 40 who want to make the most out of the minimum effective dose and see real gains. But what if your goals go beyond that and you're chasing a super lean physique or running a sub 4 hour marathon? In that case, you need to go beyond the zone 2 minimum and commit to a more structured training plan that includes targeted high intensity sessions in zone 4 and 5. If you're ready to level up, I've created a free 20-week beginner marathon training plan built on the exact science we've covered in this video. Even if you're not planning to run a marathon, the plan will help you build a consistent running routine, boost endurance and improve aerobic fitness, and burn some serious fat along the way. It's specifically designed for runners over 40 with gradual weekly progressions to keep things safe and sustainable. You can download it for free using the link in the description below. One final but very important point is that you should aim to space out your sessions evenly throughout the week so you don't go more than 2 days without a zone to run. With that in mind, if you're doing 3 zone 2 sessions per week, plan to run on Monday, Wednesday and Saturday or on Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. Why should you do this? Well, because it's essential for keeping your metabolism consistently engaged and reinforcing the aerobic adaptations you've worked hard to build, and it keeps your body staying efficient at using fat for fuel. Regular spacing of your zone 2 runs helps sustain the momentum of these physiological improvements, making each session count even more towards your long-term goals. Now that you understand the science behind the minimum effective dose of zone 2 training, and you know exactly how much you need each week to improve your metabolic health, 
lose body fat, and build endurance. Watching this video next will help you take the next step towards your goals. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.